So my friends, we've teamed up with Abyss and the review that I did on their projector a few weeks ago, they don't want that projector back and so they're very happy for me to give it away to one of you guys. All you need to do is a few very simple things. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel and you make a comment in this video and also follow me on my other social media links which will be in the description. And that's it. Don't worry if you're not on every single one of those because we will randomly select one person from all of those different sources and we'll be announcing that within one week so we plan to get this to you by Christmas this is open to worldwide and we will pay for the cost of shipping anywhere in the world for you that's it guys so if you want to know a little bit more about this great projector which I do believe is only available in the UK at the moment but if you want to know more about it then carry on and watch the rest of this video because this is a copy of that review that I did guys that's it thanks for watching and good luck and I hope you all enter don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So the team at Abyss got in touch with me and sent me across the Abyss HD 6K Smart Projector for me to have a look at. Now this is a budget projector, it comes in at around about £250 in the UK at the moment and I'll leave the latest links in the description for you to check out for yourself. It comes very well packaged in a nice medium sized box and it is a medium sized projector. This very much reminds me of the Optima HD 600 XLV that I had a few years ago and all it would say is that it feels a little bit more substantial than that and the build quality initially looks absolutely incredible very very good indeed suddenly it looks a lot more classy the finish is a lot better and the weight gives it that extra quality I'm not sure what you guys think leave a comment and let me know so as well as the projector in the package, you also get a remote control, which sadly doesn't illuminate. You also get an HDMI cable, a spare fuse, a lens cover cap, and an audio cable. There's a comprehensive set of instructions and obviously your power lead also. Now, as I mentioned right at the beginning, this thing is packed full of features. It has an ARM quad-core CPU processor. There is Android 6.0 built in, and it supports a 4K resolution, but it has a native resolution of 1080p. 7000 to 1 contrast ratio, and that lamp is an LED lamp with 6000 lumens. It has a lamp life of over 50,000 hours, and it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is a nice feature. It is USB plug and play and it also has the added advantage of screen sharing with iOS or Android devices. You can ceiling or standard mount this machine and it has multiple connections which I'll go through shortly. For the very latest price check that link in the description. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the physical features on the projector itself. Well, at the front, right in the middle there, you can see there's a screw which you can undo which gives you the ability to raise or lower the projector so that you get the optimum screen position. You can either operate via the remote control or via the buttons on front. These are well made, feel robust and all work and are clearly marked. At the front of the projector you've got your lens and the focus ring and also some vertical keystone adjustment. At the rear you've got the power cable and the on and off switch and then over on the right hand side you've got two HDMI, two USB, an Ethernet port which is very rare to see, video in, audio in and out and also a PC RGB port. Okay so now it's time to lower that screen and fire up this projector and see what type of picture it delivers. So the projector is sat on a shelf opposite and if I spin round you can see that it delivers a really bright, crisp, vivid image. Now you're presented with this as the home screen. As you can see you've got some apps on the left hand side, you've got YouTube in the middle, Aptoid TV which I'm not a great fan of I have to say. I think it's something which has probably had its time. I would definitely recommend either just installing apps from Google Play Store which is available on the app store here or alternatively you could go for a fire stick which works very well also so one of the things that I look for in the quality of the lens is how well it delivers text because that is a clear indication of how good or bad the lens is and certainly what I tend to find on some really cheap budget projectors is that the text is quite sharp in the very middle but as you go to the outer edges it gets a lot more out of focus and it sometimes is unreadable. Here it does a very good job as you can see it doesn't matter whether you're looking at the time in the top right corner or if you look at preference setting in the bottom left corner, both are very sharp and that 
is therefore a good sign. The other thing that you can notice straight away if you actually look at the information on the screen is that this has a whole load of settings. Yes, it's a Wi-Fi, I've already mentioned that, but you can also cast, and I'll show you that a little bit later. You can also set it up as a Wi-Fi hotspot and wired network, and you've even got Bluetooth. The projection setting, well, here this is where you can choose if it was ceiling mounted or if it was rear projection, you can change it in that way. Connecting to Wi-Fi was the same as any other device you might connect. I had no problems at all. It connected very quickly to my All Things Tech network. Now there's a host of different picture settings that you can choose to tweak the picture to your own personal taste and what's best for your own environment. For me, I found that standard image setting and a color temperature of cool looked the best and most natural in the room that I was projecting in. Trapezoidal correction is a feature which is very rare on projectors at this price range. This is where you can go in and stretch and twist the image to give you the best possible fit for your screen and your location. You've got a number of different automatic options, but you can go in and actually just bend and twist the image to hopefully get the right image for your location. And as you can see, it does a really good job of that. And that is very unusual at this price point. There's a host of other options to go in and tweak and change. I won't bore you in this video with those, but as you can see, there are so many options for you to play with. Now, as I said right at the beginning, I'm not a great fan of some of the features which are on the main home screen. I think with this type of projector, you're far better off connecting a fire stick to it. They don't cost very much, and you'll probably find the performance will be a lot more stable, a lot faster, and deliver a better output. There are things which I haven't gone into and installed like Kodi and Netflix, but they're there as options. But I can't comment on whether they're working, but when I loaded them up, they seem to load up in the normal way. This is the Echo Dot 4th generation with clock. Let's take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So as you can see, the speakers on this machine are okay. I would say that they're about a five out of 10, nothing amazing, nothing terrible. There is quite a lot of noise to the fan and that's something to bear in mind. Listen to this. I recorded that noise with a microphone around about a meter away from the actual projector, but if you are obviously sat a little bit further away than that, then you wouldn't notice it quite as much. And also, if you used a different sound source, like a sound bar or a surround sound system, and you're not relying on the projector speakers, then you can be a bit further away again, and you won't notice it quite as much. Now on to pitch quality. Well, the first thing that I was struck by when I first fired this up was how impressive the black levels were. Normally with a budget projector, you get a washed out, almost faded type look. This was anything but that. And in fact, in some screens, the contrast was so good, I ended up having to put a little bit more brightness into it to make it not quite as dark. One feature I really liked is that you can pull up the menu from the bottom of the screen, and then you can go into the settings and make the picture adjustments that you want right from there, so you can see them changing in real time. Often with a lot of cheaper projectors, you tend to find that you have to go in, change the settings, then keep on going back, and you don't really know what you've changed it to. So this, again, is a really good feature. Another thing that seemed to work really well was the mirror casting or casting your phone to the screen. It worked very speedy and as you can see as I slide through the pictures on my phone, it was very responsive to the projector. You could even zoom in and zoom out and get a great picture. So my friends, in summary, Abis may be a name that you're not familiar with in the projector market, but they're delivering bright, vivid, sharp images. And at this price point, that is really all you can ask for. I do have a little pet hate with some of these manufacturers that push the fact that they advertise that these support 4K when actually their native resolution is 1080p, because that can be a little bit confusing. And also I would say that it's a bit of a push to say that this is a presentation type projector. It certainly doesn't give a bright enough image for that but if you're wanting a home projector that's built well and looks pretty good and delivers a good picture well then this will be okay for you guys that's it for this video thank you so much for watching if it has been helpful do hit that like button and i look forward to seeing you on the next